Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about whether thirst is needed to enjoy a drink, and this time, a topic I saw raised by someone online, whether those in heaven are aware of the suffering in hell. This person was raising issue with the whole idea of heaven by arguing that certain things about it sound good at first, but ultimately wouldn't make people happy. They said that the very existence of hell creates problems for people in heaven because the saints experience eternal happiness. So the question is, do they know about the suffering going on in hell? If not, then heaven would be a state of blissful ignorance of reality, and I think imperfect. If so, and the saints are happy anyway, that would seem to imply sadism, a quality not fitting for the saints to have. This question reminds me of probably the saddest thing about those who reject God. Because God is the ultimate nature of all truth, you can't reject God without rejecting truth to at least some degree. That's sad by itself, but what really makes it sad is that because of this, very many people who've turned their backs on God have embraced a deceptive understanding of the world, and hold firmly to beliefs and views that are completely false. Yet they're not aware that they're false because they bought into a lie. And even if someone were to show them the truth, very many of them wouldn't recognize it. I bring this up because this question demonstrates at least two incorrect assumptions in the way that it's formulated. It assumes that people who are happy while others suffer are happy because of the suffering. And it also assumes that the existence of those who suffer is the most important factor in human happiness. Both of these assumptions are false. Many people can be happy in spite of the suffering of others, rather than because of that suffering. And the most important factor in human happiness is not suffering, it's God. Remember, because of his divine power and perfection, God is able to invariably make the saints happy, and it's the action of God on the human person that leads to true happiness and fulfillment. God is able to provide the substance, form, circumstances, and the power needed to make people happy forever. By comparison to that, the voluntary suffering of many, many impenitent sinners just isn't that significant. Now, I say voluntary suffering of impenitent sinners because that's what you need to be to end up in hell. You need to have made a choice against God's way of doing things and then chosen not to repent of that choice until you die. If you don't make that kind of choice, or do sincerely repent and seek forgiveness, there's no reason why you'd have to be part of that eternally suffering group. Hell is for people who've chosen to avoid God's path to salvation, people who rather convince themselves that they don't need God's help, and who, believing that total lie, follow it off reality's biggest cliff. It's not really that hard to avoid hell. Because avoiding hell isn't that difficult, there is one major factor about the suffering of the souls in hell that can and should produce a positive reaction from every Christian. In hell, their decisions to cause evil and harm can no longer hurt the saints. God gives us his commandments to keep us from behaving in ways that are destructive to ourselves or to others. If we choose to walk the destructive paths anyway, then the only way for God to save the saints, short of taking away free will or annihilating us completely, is to put the impenitent in a place where their behaviors will only hurt themselves and not people who are just. Now, there are pains in hell that aren't caused by the person doing the suffering. However, those pains are a direct result of choosing not to be in the presence of God. If the damned had decided to pursue heaven instead of behaving sinfully and refusing to repent, they wouldn't have to live a life that contains suffering forever. For what it's worth, I think the answer to the initial question is that those in heaven are aware of the suffering of those in hell, but because of their love for the justice of God and the protection that God provides for them and their fellow saints, and because of the certainty that those in hell are responsible for their own woes, one doesn't need to be sadistic to derive no sadness from its continuing existence. Next, how can there be happiness in heaven if all you do is worship God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.